Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another video. This is strange, uh, I think it's been more than two months since I did my last one. Uh, sorry for the delay, I had a lot of stuff with uni and things and kind of taking a back seat on the YouTube front, but I've had a couple of mates kind of get in contact with me and talk to me being like, oh Leif, come on, get a, get a rugby video out. There's not a lot of people making them at the minute, so um, for those two or three people that have actually mentioned me do that, here you are, here's a video. Um, and yeah, we're going to be talking about the Autumn Internationals this weekend. There's a lot of good games, a lot of good fixtures and matchups uh, awaiting this weekend. So, thought, what better way to get back into making videos than this weekend of rugby, which are really exciting. Uh, first of all, sorry for my voice, I'm a little bit ill, got a bit of a sore throat, but um, still thought I had to get this video out. And um, yeah, sorry it's not an English shirt, but Forza Azuri, and they've got a big game this weekend against the All Blacks. Um, but first of all, we're going to have a little recap on last week's fixtures. Uh, first of all, we had Scotland against Tonga at Scotland, a pretty convincing win. Uh, Scotland went into the game with eight debutants, uh, one of those being Kyle Stain, who scored four tries on his debut, tore the Tongans apart. I mean, I watched a lot of the game, the Tongan defence was pretty horrific, I can't lie, but uh, We'll get into the reasons why Tonga weren't so great last week, um, but a pretty convincing win, not much to say else about that game. Uh, and then later on in the weekend, we got to see Wales against New Zealand. Again, Wales had some issues with their team selection given the whole World Rugby year schedule and they couldn't have players that were playing in the Premiership over. Um, so they had a lot of unfamiliar faces in their team and New Zealand were New Zealand. Uh, bone and bat pulled the strings. Uh, their forwards play like backs, their backs are so elusive, quick, saw one of the tries of the season, probably one of the best tries I've ever seen in my life last weekend actually, um, with Sevi Reese and Surveyor and all of those partnering up and it was crazy, but um, again, wouldn't look too much into that game either, Wales were missing a lot and New Zealand have the ability to kind of tear up and do that against any opposition. Um, so, without further ado, we're going to get into this weekend's fixtures and we're going to start uh, chronologically. So we're going to start with the two 1pm kickoffs on Saturday. And the first one we're going to talk about is Ireland versus Japan. Uh, probably what you've seen in the headlines for this game is this is Johnny Sexton's 100th cap for Ireland. Uh, pretty impressive record, uh, especially given his concussion rate and head injuries that he's had over the... The past couple of years but yeah an incredible incredible achievement he'll be starting at 10 this weekend for Ireland um, obviously Ireland have got a really strong side out actually uh, the familiar faces in the centres of Bundy Aki and Gary Ringrose are two that I'm going to be looking out for Hugo Keenan is a serial try scorer in games like this so also look out for him uh, Porter's got his first start for Ireland which I was kind of confused about because I've seen him so much in the Irish shirt but obviously that's mainly been off the bench um, but yeah, Ireland look really strong here. Obviously, Japan have been the up-and-coming team within the last kind of, I guess, ever since that win they got against South Africa in the World Cup back in 2015 uh, over here in the UK. Um, but this is a game that I think Ireland should win. Obviously, Japan are with our, their captain and leader, Michael Leach, which is a big miss for them in the experience side of the game. Um, but a few big faces and names that you'll want to look out for, Lefaly in the centres, and one guy that's a big favourite of mine is Matsushima at 15. Um, you guys would have seen him a lot in Japanese rugby and the international games kind of tear up with his naughty little goosey and his try scoring ability, but uh, also his ability at Clermont. Uh, any Wasps fans watching this will know exactly who he is because he broke hearts, I think, in the 84th minute against Wasps at the Rico a few years back. Um, so he's a guy to look out for. But again, I think... Not huge amounts to go in depth here, I think just from 1 to 15, even 1 to 23, Ireland is a much better outfit than Japan. I don't think it will be a run right kind of game, um, but I think my prediction is Ireland's win by about 15 or 20. Um, and also, what I will say is look out for Joey Carberry. Uh, given it's Sexton's 100th cap, I think probably around the hour mark, about 60 minutes into the game, I think. Uh, it'll be likely that Sexton will get pulled off the pitch to have a standing ovation, uh, have his round of applause from the whole stadium, which gives 20 minutes for Joey Carberry to come and tear up in the second half, which uh, is exciting because he's a really, really good rugby player. Um, unfortunately, he's had to kind of live under the wings and shadow of uh, jo Johnny Sexton uh, in the last years or so. So, uh, Ireland by about 15 or 20, but it should be a good game. I'm looking forward to it.
Then in our other 1pm kickoff on Saturday afternoon, we've got the Italians, my boys, against uh, the All Blacks in Rome. Uh, obviously, starting with New Zealand, obviously coming off the back of last week's win uh, against Wales. Uh, they've got a few changes. Um, they've got Captain Kane's back in amongst the team. Obviously, he's had a few shoulder and chest injuries in the recent times. And taking over the captaincy in 2019, he's only played six games, I think, as captain. So uh, it's good to see him back leaving the side, which will be good for New Zealand. Obviously, we've got Richie Mwanga, who's going to be starting at 10. So Bowden gets a rest this weekend. And obviously, the informed Severis also comes into the starting 15, which is good to see. Um, look, a lot of changes. Uh, one guy that I look for is Brad Weber. Those of you that are doing international, autumn international, fancy rugby, whatever it's called, I'm about to do my team after this video for my uni mates. Uh, he's a guy I'll look out for because he's a serial try scorer, um, hugely, hugely talented in support lines. I know it's very easy to say when you play for a team like New Zealand who always breaking, but he, so many times he is that guy who just breaks off little pop parts and runs in 15 20 meter scores and does nothing but does support lines but it's a lot harder talent than people realize so look out for him to get on the score sheet maybe once or twice uh looking at the record of this fixture in the history of the game it's 15 to nil to new zealand um so would not be surprised if this is a convincing win for new zealand um from the italian perspective look they've got a lot of big names uh cc and negri in the forwards are two guys that i look out for massively uh, a guy that I always harp on about is Paolo Garbisi. He's obviously very young and inexperienced, but he's getting that experience. Uh, they keep blooding him in, keep giving him that opportunity at 10 for Italy. Uh, he's a really exciting guy. You've obviously got Monte Ioani, who I'm a big fan of on the wing. And another guy that you know that I'm a massive, massive fan of is Matteo Minozzi at 15. He's back with the Italian side. Obviously last year didn't play in the Six Nations for Italy because he had a some mental health stuff and didn't really want to go and play with Italy, was enjoying his stuff with Wasp, didn't want to go away from it. It was a lot of a mix up of things and uh, it's good to see him back in the Italian shirt because uh, they're definitely a much better outfit, especially with ball in hand when he is playing. Um, so yeah, I mean, an early afternoon kickoff in Rome is always a good spectacle to watch with the sun out, uh, but no doubt it will be a difficult afternoon for them. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go for, obviously, an easy New Zealand win. I think it, I think the bookies have got it, the line at about 57 points in favour of New Zealand. Um, I think it might be less than that. I think it might be a little bit closer. I still think they win by 40, 50 plus, and they could easily win by 70 odd plus. But I, I'm, I'm backing the Italians to keep it within 57. But not much to say. I think New Zealand win this game pretty convincingly. Then the main reason I'm sure most of you are watching this video, it's England versus Tonga at 3.15 at Twickenham. Uh, we'll get straight into the big news obviously that's come out today is that Owen Farrell has tested positive for COVID. Um, obviously given the situation that he'll obviously be double vaccinated and jabbed, that there's still a possibility that he will play tomorrow and start. Um, but also I'm sure a huge possibility that he doesn't play at all, uh, which means that the probability of the 10 lineup comes in two forms two ways uh, the first one is Marcus Smith obviously he would have been starting anyway was he given given he was 100% uh, he's been training all day today and uh, Richard Cockrell's come out and said that he's fully fit and fine obviously the decision will come to Eddie Jones who plays at 10 if Farrell isn't available and then we've also got George Furbank who can play in that role Fingers crossed from my perspective that we don't see Furbank at 10 because I'm not a huge fan of him at 10 I'm a big fan of him at 15 um, and I won't get into it, but there was a period of time last year at Saints where they decided to pick Furbank at 10 ahead of James Grayson, which I was not a fan of. Um, so fingers crossed, either Farrell is okay or Smith's good enough to start at 10. Um, obviously, Tonga's defence wasn't great last week, um, which provides a really good viewing for us as England fans because we've got the versatility in the centres of Manu Tuolagi and Henry Slade. Obviously, both bring very different dimensions to the game. Um, but both could be a lot of fun to watch. And speaking of fun to watch on this England side, uh, those of you who haven't watched a lot of him, Adam Radwan is... I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to say watch him move when the ball gets in his hand in broken field because it's um, hard, to, hard to explain and give words to because it's phenomenal how he moves like that. It's ridiculous. Um, but speaking on Tonga, 
I know I've just talked about their defence not being the strongest last week, um, but there is some kind of background to why that occurred and why that happened last week. Um, obviously, similar with Wales, they couldn't pick their full strength side given the World Rugby scheduling of the year. Uh, very similar to the Tongan side last week, actually. So a lot of their players play in the French League. They couldn't have those players come over to play for them last weekend. Um, six of their pack this week come straight in from French sides abroad. Um, they've also got Takalua, who comes over and plays at nine, um, from Toulon, who's a very, very highly rated scrum half. And one guy, again, who's very close to my heart, having seen him in the Leicester Tigers jersey for many years, is Toulouse Veanu, who has electrifying feet and pace. Um, scored one of the best tries I've ever seen against Worcester for us, uh, and is a real, real talent. So, um... If we kick wrong and kick poorly into the hands of him at 15, uh, look for some, some fast footwork and uh, maybe a bit of magic at 15 from him. Um, so yeah, I think the bookies on this one have got us as 56 point favourites. Again, when it's a game like this, it's hard to kind of pinpoint how much we win by, and I'm not going to say how much we do win by, but again, I'd be surprised if it's not a very, very clear cut victory. Uh, and just one added thing, I'm really looking forward to watching Don Brandt and Mitchell off the bench towards the end of the game because obviously two very different players, um, but both played exceptional rugby the last two, three seasons for their club. And it's good to see them get some recognition uh, in the England jersey. So it'll be good to see them get some minutes and um, yeah, a comfortable win for England, I'm sure. Then we move on to another huge game this weekend, 5.30. We've got Wales against South Africa at the Principality. Um, I love 5.30 kickoffs in Wales. Um, the fire comes up, it's dark. It's just, it's something that always kind of reminds you of international rugby that early kickoffs on a Sunday at uh, Rome, like those are the things you always remember. And 5.30 kickoffs in Wales, I absolutely love. Um, and this should be a really, really good game. Obviously, Wales last week struggled, as you mentioned, with the lack of players they could have. But six changes to this weekend. Um, a few main ones, obviously, in the back line. We've got Dan Bigger back at 10. We've got Reese it back on the wing. Tompkins back in the middle, who's played really well at club level this season. Um, Jonathan Davies has got the captain's armband. Uh, obviously, without Alan Wynne jones it was a big, big shame for them. Um, and a big blow. I think he misses the whole Six Nations come out this week as well, which is a real shame. So, get well soon to Alan Jones. Um, but yeah, really exciting backline for the Welsh team this week, uh, which gives them a bit more firepower and exuberance to in the attacking third. And hopefully, if they get into the red zone, put some points and actually put some pressure on South Africa because they're going to need to do that because I'm sure South Africa will be very clinical when they get into the red zone and taking their points and with the boot of Andre Pollard putting pressure on the Welsh team. Um, so yes I've talked about how good I think the Welsh backline is but a big worry is the pack and their, and their front eight I just worry that they're missing maybe one or two many obviously we talked about Alan Wynne jones uh, Elliot D is injured Ken Owens is injured they just just adds up a bit and you look at their backline and it's just no Navidi no Tipperick people like that and it just looks a little bit light of experience and match experience in a game like this, which is what you'll need against a very physical and upfront team in South Africa. Um, and it's going to be really tough for Wales, even though it is in their, their home turf. Uh, it'll be a tough game. One guy I'm really looking forward to is Will Griff John off the bench. Probably a guy you haven't heard much of, but I've watched a lot of him at Sale. And uh, a really, really talented front rower. Um, so I'd like to see him come off the bench. I'm sure he will. I'm sure there'll be the classic kind of front row change after about 50, 55 minutes. Uh, so look out for him because he's a really good player and I'm a big fan of his. Um, as for South Africa, obviously they've just come off the back of a quite disappointing third in the rugby championship. Uh, they haven't won in Wales since 2013, which was a big surprise to me when I was kind of looking into the game and doing a little bit of research. Um, and a few changes from the teams that they've kind of put out uh, in the rugby championship. I haven't really mentioned it, but this is the kind of stage two years to the World Cup where teams both have the win now mentality, but also the look to the future for that squad in 2023, which is obviously a huge thing for all these nations. Uh, so you don't have the likes of LaRue, obviously, Fafta Clerks injured. Uh, so we're going to see that kind of squad depth that South Africa have and they're going to need if they're going to want to uh, go back and win back-to-back -back World Cups. 
Obviously, two integral players for the South African team are going to be Dale Lande and Lacunya Am in the middle of the pitch. Uh, they're going to have to bring that physicality and just bring that experience in the middle of the pitch to South Africa. They obviously have a lot of talent throwing out wide to the likes of Mpimpi, but they also need to be brute strength and force, and that's what those two give them. They give them a bit of a bit of flair in the middle, but also that strength and power to, to get past the game line and give the likes of Pollard to kick corners and just dictate games, which is what South Africa is so good at. Um, you've got the likes of Etzebeth, De Jager, Khaleesi, Vermeulen. You've got Jasper Vita on the bench. Like They've got a lot of brute force as well in that forward pack. And for that reason, I think it's going to be a tough old, tough old game for Wales. Uh, it's not like Wales to give in and, and throw the towel... Um, especially when they've got a lot of their players back healthy and fit, which they do this week. Um, but again, like I mentioned with those forwards that they miss out on this week, I think they'll struggle. Uh, and I think South Africa will win. I think it'll be a close game. I think uh, within 10 points, around the 10 point kind of mark, I think it will be where it's about. Again, again, it's a game where it could be all three results. Um, but I'm going to say South Africa to win this and break their rut in Cardiff and win for the first time since 20. 13. And then to finish Saturday, we've got the 8 p.m. kickoff. We've got France against Argentina. Uh, I'm sure a lot of my university mates will be watching this given the French representation we have at Uni Rugby at the minute. Um, again, a very strong French squad have been selected here. Just start by looking at the front row. Again, hopefully, boys, if you're watching, I hope my pronunciation is okay. Obviously, you've got Bai, Machot, and Huas, who I always pronounce his name wrong, so I never try and pronounce it. But um, that's a really, really strong front three. They've been dominating uh, world rugby for a long period of time now and uh, are a big part of what the French build their game on. But enough of this rubbish about forwards because no one cares about forwards. We all know what we want to talk about. And it's 9, 10, 12. Dupont, Jalabert and Tamak. All on the pitch at the same time, starting. I, I don't even know what to say about it. I'm just... I can't wait to watch this. These are three of the best ball players you'll see it, uh, in one team for a long time um, in, in international rugby. They're so good. Um, I don't know what to say because they're so good. You, you can't you can't say anything else. You just got to watch them. Um, one guy we'll talk about is Gail Fiku, who, with those three all on the pitch, can very easily go under the radar this weekend. Um, given the amount of ball playing ability they have. But Fiku's got a massive, massive role to play. Given you've got Antamak at 12, Fiku's going to have to be a little bit more physical, a little bit more direct, get them over the game line so they have the likes of Antamak and Jalabert who can pull the strings and play corners and throw the ball out wide. But if you don't have the likes of Fiku making those yards in the middle, then it's very easy to defend against a team that just want to go wide and just want to play ball. Jouet. Uh, so... Um, yeah, he's got a very, very important role to play. Uh, one guy I do want to talk about is Jaminet. I hope I've pronounced his name right as well. He's a young 22-year-old uh, who's going to be starting at 15 this weekend. I don't know a lot about him. I've heard very good things. He's at Perpignan. He's a guy, again, like I said about previous teams for the 2023 World Cup. I think the French are looking for him to be their guy going into that World Cup. As all of you will know, I'm pretty upset because I would love to see Brice Dula at 15. Um, as I absolutely love him, but he's getting towards the elder part of his career. He's not that old, but he's getting towards the elder part of his career, and they need to look at other options, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see Delan there, obviously. Uh, but uh, I've heard also through the grapevine from French fans that he will be the guy on kicking duties this weekend as well, so look out for that. Uh, awesome international nations fancy rugby fans as a possible option to be picking. Um, but yeah, really, really strong French side and um, yeah, like it a lot. Uh, as for Argentina, two names straight away that I'm going to talk about are very obvious because they both play for Leicester Tigers, are uh, Montoya and Maroni. Montoya is an exceptional, exceptional hooker, brings a whole lot of experience. He's completely changed the dynamic at Leicester Tigers in the front row uh, with his experience. Uh, he's been quality for us, always gets on the end of a few tries at the back of driving rules and does so a lot for Argentina as well. So don't be surprised if he's on the score sheet by the end of the game. And Moroni is uh, a very, very underrated 13 at Leicester. He's a guy that if you ask Leicester fans, they'll 
completely chew your ear off about how good he is. But if you ask other fans, probably don't know him that well. And um, that's a sign of a guy who just does his job perfectly. He's not necessarily the most flair and um, out there player, but he just does the 13 role perfectly, both in attack, being physical, but also having the ability to go wide, and then defensively just making every single tackle and just being a very front up presence. Uh, and he does that every week. So look out for him. Um, obviously, you've got Fakando Issa, who's a huge defensive presence for them. And you've got Thomas Lavanini, the card machine himself. I think he's the most carded international rugby player. So if you're looking for a little bet, maybe that could be one that you throw some money on. Um, but again, I think France are just going to be too strong here. I think it will be convincing enough that it's never really in doubt. And um, yeah, I think the French could put some real points on here. So maybe French by about 20, something in that ballpark, I'd say. Um, but yeah, don't be surprised if Argentina stay stay in the game for a while and maybe a try from Carrera, who you will see week in, week out at Newcastle. But uh, yeah, France in a pretty comfortable victory. And to finish the weekend of Autumn Internationals, we've got Scotland against Australia Sunday at 2.15. A very changed Scottish team from last week's victory against Tonga. We've got Captain Hogg back in at 15. We've got Finn Russell back at 10, the likes of Van der Merwe back on the wing. Uh, Chris Harris back in the middle Sam Johnson retains his place in the middle Ali Price at 9 again look a lot of talent Hastings on the bench there's a lot of talent in that Scottish backline a lot of flair um, a new era I'd say obviously it's not a new era because these guys have been around for a few years now but it's not always going to be that rugged penalty 18-15 win at Murrayfield anymore they have the ability to put points on teams not just any team but good, good teams and Australia are a good side um, finishing second in the rugby championship this year, which is a really good achievement. So, um, yeah, it's there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, talking about excitement in this Scottish team, you've got to look at that back row as well with Richie Watson and Matt Ferguson, uh, all kind of bring a little bit of different dynamic to to the game with ball carrying, jackling, defensive chop tackles. They all have a little bit about them, which makes them gel so well as a trio which is why I love those three in that back row um, and obviously I know I've mentioned him but I want to talk about him again Finn Russell's going to be hugely important in this game not just with his little nudges and his flair out of the backs and his offloads but just being that cool calm collected guy at 10 knowing when to kick corners knowing when to slow the game down and get his forwards in the game um, so just his game management is going to be crucial as well uh, one guy who's on the bench who isn't starting this weekend is Carl Stain off his four tries last weekend, which is probably the first time in history someone scored four tries on debut and then not started the next game. But uh, look out for him to come off the bench again. Uh, really good watch from him last week. As for Australia, they look a little bit inexperienced. Uh, in terms of the forwards, obviously they rely a lot on Michael Hooper with his experience. Over 100 test caps as captain and also uh, over 100 test caps. And he's also captain, just putting that out there. And then James Slipper in the front row, who's also north for 100 test caps, who's a big part of what Australia do. Uh, in the half-back partnership, they've got Nick White and James O'Connor, who are going to be crucial. Again, like I said, with Finn Russell and Ali Price, going to have to dictate. This is huge for game management with them as well. Uh, two very good ball players. Uh, so look out for them. And also a very, very talented Andrew Kellaway, who I've watched a lot of in Super Rugby. He's at 15. Uh, so look out for him. And then the likes of Skelton, Tate McDermott, Kirtley Beal, those three to come off the bench are going to be crucial uh, in either having that experience of closing out the game when it gets to the latter stages or really pushing and bring that energy off the bench to try and get Australia over the line. Uh, currently, the bookies have this as Australia one-point favourites. Uh, I actually think Scotland are going to win this game. I think it'll be close. I don't think there'll be a lot in it. Um... But I'm going to say Scotland to win it. Uh, margin, I'm not sure. Maybe around the score. Something like that. But I'm going to say Scotland are going to win this game at home. And uh, get the job done. Um, yeah, that's it from me. Uh, obviously, I've been a little bit ill. So, sorry the video is out quite late. And um, doesn't have any magical features and animations on it because I've done this quite late given uh, my illness this week um, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you've got any 
uh, thing you think of or anything you agree with or don't agree with. Comment anyone that you like uh, to have a big game this weekend who you think is a good option in your fantasy team. Give it a like, share it around if you can because that would be really helpful. I think we're about 530 subs, so if we can try and get to 550, even 600 by the end of these Autumn Internationals, that would be great. Um, obviously, the aim still is to try and break the 1,000 mark at one point, um, so that would be amazing. But uh, cheers, guys. Thanks again a lot. Have a good weekend. Enjoy a few lagers. Hopefully, England get the win and the Scots and it's uh, for the Irish and the Welsh as well. Um, but see you all later. Have a good weekend. Peace out.